Hi, we are in the second part. Please go check out the first part to gauge your bearings. In the first part, I spoke about a little dream that I, it wasn't a dream. I was in the middle of dream space and la la land. Mm. And in this la la land that I was in, I woke up out of it suddenly watching a video that Tom Hughes and Pete Garcia were doing, you know, collaborating. And I was like, mm. yeah. I then went on right ahead to explain to you guys. A generational curse in my family where the females they're in they always marry these these pip squeaks i then went on right ahead to explain an entity basically whatever might be the generational demon like fallen one whatever might be the level it's likely a spiritual wickedness in high places these ones that roam around just kind of spreading themselves and families are lower order demons but just so you can understand how potent even a lower order demon is only just look at the ca ca chaos the cataclysmic like circus that has been created out of your families just merely using spiritual wickedness in high places like your whole entire family lines have been laying waste by lower order demons what then are you going to do with the principality over your countries south africa the church system here in here in is 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 like a kiddies game if you were prayerful your families would break such curses from your grandfathers and your grandmothers and your great grandmothers etc and also the nation would not be sat on now by a gender-based violence principality that's making every man in the household now slap their wives of course that wasn't a uh, hyperbole it is not every man that's slapping their wives but the epidemic is ramping up in the country only because these spiritual wickednesses in high places prospered to magnify the issue so prolifically in the country that it ultimately ended up being a whole principality lodged on a land so these issues that i'm speaking about are south african and it doesn't really matter that i have as many naysayers as i do bottom line is it's a tribulation now and i'm trying to help you understand now that you're sitting in this uncomfortable squeezy joint why you got here so that you're not gonna have too much beef a whole bunch of qualms with being left behind groveling and stuff after jesus christ takes the body of christ you're gonna have to basically see yourselves in the mirror i'm looking for the man in the mirror you're gonna have to see the man in the mirror you're gonna have to see the woman in the mirror you're gonna have to understand that all of this destruction of the planet you had it coming god is not just this trigger happy rando sitting in the sky on some i'm really not happy with you so boom bang bang he shoots you down bang bang you hit the ground bang bang that awful sound bang bang oh how god shot you down no he wasn't trigger happy if anything he was slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and not willing that you should perish but that you should come to a knowledge of him he was so slow to anger that one day was like a thousand years and a thousand years as one year yeah wanted to say year then that's how slow he was but things got so rotten that he had to take us home and the culmination of rottenness can be represented by all of your activity on the ground. You have to see yourself in the four horsemen in the apocalypse, of the apocalypse. You have to see how it happened so that you will be given a shot to be humble given that you currently lack it you're very prideful and so because you're full of pride you might very potentially take the mark of the beast because you're all mad and angry fuming rolling on the floor like a child suffering from the terrible twos at god who is now lambasting you having taken away all of your comforts and now you're eating your bread with carefulness and you're drinking your water with your with astonishment before you get upset and back Bash your fists at God and so therefore fulfill Bible prophecy where it is written that even though the Lord is plaguing the living daylights out of them they neither repented of their sorceries their idolatries their sexual immoralities and etc mm yeah so that you don't join that band of miscreants but rather be among those with the mark of god the seal of god on their foreheads you have to understand how it is that you're absolutely utterly and comprehensively responsible for why the planet is going through all this you did it and only difference between you and those blasphemers that know that don't repent from their sorceries etc when god plagues them is the fact that you see why you have this coming and so you've humbled yourself to the wrath of god and have taken in your stride whatever he will do to the planet and all you can pray for now is grace that he might limit your suffering in comparison to everybody else that's all you got okay you have destroyed the earth it is written in god's word in the book of revelation that the lord will destroy those who destroy the earth i'm out here describing to you how you destroyed this planet okay 
and why it is that you have to take in your stride all that thirst all that hunger all that lack of medication all that lack of comfort in sleep all that shriveling around in winter without a comfortable bed all that everything that's happening i want you guys to understand why you must just take it with grace why you must make like the underground church in China. And even though your country really hates God, you're nonetheless always crying as you're worshiping because you just can't believe that he saved you. Even if your country doesn't treat you very well, well, you still can't help but worship him. I'm trying to get you to that point by making you see just how incredibly wicked you were so that you can see that you deserve this and when then you see that you deserve this you will also realize that you don't deserve redemption and so having been given it um you're you're better off you're one up on everybody else that's gonna be in all of their anger happy to embrace a mere mortal as god take his mark gain a temporary comfort only to later or on be given loathsome sores and be scorched with great heat okay great now that we've made that a clarity let's also then speak about this uh, entity right that is obviously hovering over south africa but it it managed to succeed and do the prosperous thing that it did on the ground using lower order entities using lower order uh demons basically these scrimmaging randos that appear to you guys as apparitions in the night ghosts uh poltergeist activity yeah those are low order scary as they are trust me they're low order yeah because principalities are the ones that control a national pandemic and a national epidemic like 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 gender-based violence or unemployment or poverty that's likely a, a ruler or an authority or a spiritual or a, what is this or a principality but the ones that make you uh what is this make your your families your individual families just walk in a grain those are low order because that's a small job however look at how like i said it's laying you waste hasn't it yeah so have respect for entities because they can absolutely clap by you the book of jude makes us clear when he was speaking about false prophets out here mocking the living daylines out of entities they don't understand and made himself an example by saying look at what the archangel michael did instead of giving the devil grief he said satan the lord rebuke you because these men speak of celestial beings like nambi pambi blapa not knowing what under heaven it is that's the real deal about them yeah when you disrespect entities you end up with a generational curse clapping you like no man's business and there's nothing you can do about it yeah you better have mad respect and understand that unless you cast out that entity in the name of the lord you ain't gonna get nowhere so you gotta say demon the lord rebuke you fallen spirit ruler the lord rebuke you instead of i come here in the name of my power and next thing you're married to a guy you can't stand look at how it handled you you become like the seven sons of skiva on that day they'll tell you jesus i know uh Petronella I know, Garabo I know, Peter, John I know, but who are you? And then they will clap by you and throw you out and your state will be worse than it was at first, okay? Don't be like the seven sons of Sceva. I'm just saying, because currently that's what you are. You pray in the name of Jesus, but you don't know him and you rebuke entities. You rebuke the devil instead of rebuking the devil in the name of the Lord. And the devil just looks at you on some, Garabo I know, John I know, Peter I know, Petronella I know. But who are you, Nonzanta? Goodness, I don't even like your name. Papa, Karimbama. So stop disrespecting entities, because like I said, look at what they've helped you do to the earth. Okay. Le sutle gile now, isn't it? Kisono galon. Kisono. Let la builwe. Kisadane. But anyway, let's move past that sono. The entity that is in my particular family, I told you guys that it wears a dops. It dresses like a man in the 50s uh, or the 60s, whatever might be that time, yes, or town, etc. It looks like my grandfather, basically. Mm. But the, the power behind it is always this skinny man wearing a suit with a top hat, a magician's top hat. And these figures in my dream are always very exorbitantly sexually perverse coercive however they always come in the name of family they always come in the name of provider protector they always come in the name of that which i am in dire need of and my first experience with this entity in a dream was one where i personally as Garabo, was a teenager in what looked like some lowly woman's house that i could not even recognize okay i couldn't recognize it so perhaps i was being shown something from long ago it was a teenage version of me and my grandmother was in that dream and 
a, a man that was exorbitantly drunk wearing this outfit top hat brown suit etc came in like i said he was very drunk and as soon as he walked in the room i clutched my grandmother i clutched my grandmother because i felt as if though he was going to rape me and my grandmother acted very blase aloof nonchalant like she was not aware that i was being sexually accosted by this man this man then took my hand and said little girl come sit next to me and i did not want to sit next to him and he kept on pulling me and i kept on holding on to my grandmother's skirt while um not wanting to go where it is that he was at and the dream then ended with me washing dishes in the kitchen as some older woman that looked like a domestic worker i had converted overnight into a domestic maid from being a teenage girl that was scared of some drunk man in the house that was my first experience with that entity in a dream and when i woke up from it i didn't understand what it was uh, until years would progress and i would be shown many of the men that have put witchcraft on me wearing that exact same outfit and it all then ultimately made sense the men that accost me with corobela with bring back lost lover a lot of times not all the time but a lot of times in my dreams they present in that outfit and so the lord is helping me figure out what that entity is it is a person that rocks up filled with the spirit and he is lowly in comparison to you and yet he's out here marrying a woman or someone's twiddling in my dream that man was a drunk do you understand what i'm saying and I, I don't know if it was my grandmother's husband but my grandmother appeared to be ignoring his abuse of me my dad was a drunk okay even though he wasn't sexually abusive but he was a drunk and he was lowlier than my mom he didn't make not low not materially not financially not initially anyway because she ultimately became stronger than him financially like i said they, the men always come into the lives of these women slightly better off financially but then the women always just skyrocket past them they always just skyrocket past them so my dad was a drunk that man likely represented just the myriads of kinds of men but like i said there was this guy from mtn that i used to have a massive crush on and that guy physically was taller than me he looked like everything i wanted in a man he had the right sort of kind of body build that i wanted in a man plus i was attracted to him physically i thought he was cute facially um i thought he had he was basically right for me career wise everything and i had a massive crush on him and god kept on showing me this guy in dreams and in many of my dreams he was wearing that 60s outfit that 50s outfit with the top hat with the top hat what's with the top hat um the lord is showing me a man involved in the occult severely involved in dark arts um and yet he is presenting in society as a regular guy so perhaps the guy in my dream the reason why he was drunk was because he indeed is inebriated with demonic magic he is not sober at all the scriptures speak of sobriety as something that we ought walk on in um because our adversary the devil prances around us seeking whomever he might devour and the best people to pounce on are those who are not sober and we all know that sobriety in waking space and in the party scene speaks of a person that has not drunk a single ounce of alcohol so i often see lots of drunkardness in my dreams um on the part of these kinds of men and that is the law showing me they are not sober they are not vigilant and so of course the devil has devoured them and what is the thing that is making them not sober the thing that's making them drunk it's witchcraft they're involved in a lot of black magic and they use it for everything they are also sexually abusive because they lure women into their lives by manipulation spiritually in a way that women would not have chosen if at all they were sober they were not manipulated spiritually so if a woman would not have chosen you on that day you are a rapist aren't you when you succeed to have, finally have uh, sex with her because she did not consent she would not have consented if at all she was not spiritually manipulated so i keep on saying that these men are sexually ab are sexual abusers they are molesters they are rapists whether or not they want to believe it and if they don't have conviction that they're rapists then i guess that's why you're not in the sky and you're chilling out here in the tribulation i'm trying to help you understand that given that you were running rampant up and down these streets raping women in a way that was unseeable as rape the world came to an end literally god raptured the saints and just plagued everybody the antichrist forced everybody else that did not allege to god to take the mark of the beast and now they're busy chopping off all your heads because you wouldn't stop raping women yeah okay uh these men are often very 
what is this in my dreams um they're often very sexually charged too and the my the, the the one dream i was scared to be in the presence of this man i did not want him touching me evidencing that there was a history of being physically touched by this guy or raped or treated in some funny kind of strange way and if at all all the guys that i saw in the future in my dreams wearing that outfit um were in that state it evidenced that i ought have been you know fast to run from them but because they did not wear the same disposition as the man in my dream that i was scared of as a teenage girl i was sort of kind of trustworthy not trustworthy sorry i was sort of kind of trusting of them this guy from mtn that i had a big fat chunky crush on i saw him so very many times in that outfit in that state yet because i had such big feelings for him i brushed it off i did not rightly interpret the dream as i ought and so i continued to heavy crush on him god had mercy on me he was gracious making sure that that does not end up working out because i would later discover that this guy's extremely rotten like he's extremely rotten but if at all i had not had the if at all the lord did not personally protect me from that man and we had ended up together i was gonna ultimately learn what a big fat chunky mistake it was so while that guy was physically bigger than me, while his build was physically larger than me, in all other regards, he was small. In all other regards, he was small. He was going to be the kind of guy that I was going to date. Do you understand what I'm saying? Marry, whatever. And initially, we would have been okay, but over time, I would have been frustrated by Why would that have happened inevitably? Because he was shown me as a man that is walking with that entity. And that entity is deliberately trying to marry women in my family. But because I got born again, the lord has been preventing such men from coming into my space why due to yes my born again stage but also the fact that i intentionally went out of my way when i was newly saved to ask the lord to cure me from what i had made an observation was an obvious generational curse i had seen this trend all throughout my life as a kid i saw it in my elders my parents and as i i was by the time i got saved i was like 26 uh going on 27 so i had already made the observation and even my, my my cousins my peers uh who were not yet married but we all just had this tendency towards dating pipsqueaks like all of us it was just a trend and having made the observation i took it to god in prayer and it's written in god's word ask anything in my name and it will be given you so i asked the lord to basically protect me from that curse i saw it for what it was i prayed over it i fasted over it i've done quite the most concerning overcoming that hurdle and a good decade later wow look at me mm. over a decade later since getting born again i was born again in 2011 i'm still fighting it i'm still fighting it so if y'all think spiritual wickedness in high places ain't jack you're really quite mistaken why am i still fighting it 10 years later i would not need be to be fighting this entity 10 years later if it had not yet graduated to a principality over the country if it had not spread so wildly like a fire through the nation that it then was awarded hierarchical standing in the sense that now it prospered to lodge a whole ruler or a principality over south africa that is trying to proliferate this agenda when then it is just being taken in everybody's stride in the country that's when anybody at all that tries to conquer that entity just can't come up for air bad daughter they struggle to come up for air and that's what happened with me so many south african women so many south african families were capitulating to this that anybody at all that was trying to stand against this particular grain did not stand a chance now if you think about what happened sometime just after the new south africa the new democracy so that would be 1994 i told you guys that there was a cult like a whole coven mm, whatever that started in kwazulu natal by black men where it is that they wanted to establish a patriarchy in their own image apart from consent by women where they're gonna lord it over us with an iron fist and cause us to just merely take in our stride not grabbing the promise of the new south africa but uh, insisting on being maintained in lowly positions where it is that men are going to be taking care of us 
and also every so often perhaps accepting in our stride too polygamous marriages where we are going to be sister wives with multiple females for one man that cult established itself in those early days of our democracy because they did not want black women especially after making an observation that they were getting strong thanks to indeed the recovery from systematic oppression they made a decision that they gotta control this and brittle it and it started out in guazulu natal i told you guys but then it branched out it grew it, it's almost like it developed franchises in all other nine province all the rest of the eight provinces and um minus okay the rest basically there's nine provinces in the country lodged itself in all provinces and it grew like a big fat chunky bird that flew and upon this cult growing there then was an increase in gender-based violence in the country i've already spoken about this i've uh, unpacked it at length in some other video that i did mm. uh, and the reason why gender-based violence increased was because women were trying to resist being lorded over by this entity the spirit this cult spiritually and upon resisting the men then just started killing them so uh, this uh murder of women was a byproduct of this cult although not an initially expected end or uh, not an end sorry but side effect so it is essentially collateral damage for women to die their little mission they did not intend it to butcher women but just by mere virtue of women resisting the cult uh the men then became violent and so now because of all of this violence there then is now also a whole bunch of bitterness in women in the country the bitterness of which um is causing women to sin grievously against god and so there is now just a push by entities in the country to proliferate this new thing that started as a result of this cult and so what's going on is that women just in jefela to marry at all to be content at all um in whatever it is that might be family creation they are now taking whatever comes their way first of all embracing ideologies like a man can actually be a stay-at-home husband and also secondly um telling themselves that as women they can be bigger than men and be okay but these men are unable entirely to be okay with that especially considering the country's been exacerbated in this wickedness by this cult that has spread all throughout the provinces now there's just this like loggerheadedness between men and women in the country especially in the black community and it has caused hostilities so uh, egre egregious against the land at large that people like me with a bright eyed and bushy tailed outlook on how this ought to be with a hope that it can be fixed are looked at as these naive randos that must just be shot dead while everybody else butts heads in this little arena so i was kicked out of society for simply having hope that literally it doesn't have to be this bad and also i was kicked out of society for not being prepared to have a stay-at-home husband first of all basically i woke up i got saved and then i woke up and realized why and heaven do i keep on dating little men there's a problem with that why do i keep on dating men that are not at my standard intellectually academically financially and etc why do i keep doing this it's problematic i discovered i made a happen upon us i told you guys i created a word the other day it's made up of happenstance and happen upon and i'll call it happen upon us i made a happen upon us to discover that that was a problem i self-diagnosed that i was suffering from a generational curse there's something wrong but south africa was already in this like battle zone whatever you want to call it this oedipal complex battle zone and with it being in this oedipal complex battle zone that i was uh then living amidst i was considered very exceptionally naive and much like a civilian while all these other soldiers fighting for all the wrong causes were at war and so my constitution was civilian -y. they look at me like a naive little civilian in the midst of a war what am i doing in the battlefield i should just get out and that's what they did they kicked me out they a poison darted me out the way nobody likes a happy go lucky nobody likes a bright eyed and bushy tailed like futuristic bouncing baby in the middle of a great depression and i was a bouncing baby in the midst of a great depression so i was in no position to have any such high hopes except that's just the thing about a country who has given itself to the devil with all of its mbepo and uktwala and uktwasa and stuff yeah uh they're gonna think that jesus ain't jack mm. anyway the day's gonna come when every knee's gonna bow every tongue confess that christ is lord and before that day y'all gonna give god a lot of attitude uh however you are exactly in this position now because you gave god some attitude but at least now you're listening aren't you because it's the tribulation Ooh, mm. yeah 
Anywho, my hope in Christ was undermined, as will the hope in Christ of anybody living in a country that is severely compromised against God. Anybody living in an idolatry country, an idolater country, will be persecuted as a Christian. So South Africa, thanks to all of that sorcery, all of that darkness, all of that compromise, all of that settling, I told you guys you're destroying the earth, so God is going to destroy you. It became like Iran, underhandedly. It became like the Middle East. It became like China. It became like India, like countries that basically just have no regard for people who honor Christ. And when the majority of a country does not honor Christ, while a small conglomerate do, uh, there's going to be exorbitant persecution of those people. So Iranian Christians, Chinese Christians, basically Christians living in such harsh territories can dream on about big, fat, chunky Greek weddings, if you know what I mean. Mm. They can dream on about being regarded by society, about everybody celebrating your big day. They can dream on about, yeah, there is no living at peace in a country that hates God. So so the best thing to happen for people who love God in a country that hates God is to move to a country that is that can live at peace with God's children. And I keep saying that the world is increasingly being unable to do that. South Africa having historically been a Christian country, now it's I don't know why, Kisangoma, just walking around. Yeah, Christians can't really live, they can't breathe. And given that South Africa is a democratic country with a democratically elected president with a whole bill of rights covering citizens' um, liberties, doing this to Christians, it evidences just the, de the depth of rot in such countries as south africa south africa america many countries in europe canada uh, australia etc nations like these Botswana, yeah where it is that christians can freely live are becoming increasingly draconian against believers in a way that is unseen and unfelt and that is the great apostasy because if at all those countries call themselves christian and yet there's so much christian persecution on the ground it evidences that we're at the very end of the end and it is very difficult to rescue christians from a country that is christian because you are not going to be believed when you say that i am being persecuted as a christian and the lord saw that that would be a thing the great apostasy is the thing that makes the earth like mess up to pain a Mesop Mesopotamia. That's what it is that makes the whole planet look like the Middle East. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but in a way that is unseen. And when Christian persecution is unseen, it's undocumented. And when it's undocumented, nobody's going to come and rescue the day. When no one comes and rescues the day, Christians are therefore trapped in countries that claim to love God when they don't. And the Christian population in that country is essentially a handful. Nobody really knows that that's a thing because the majority of people are professing Christ in that country. And so they are kicking out God's true servants out of the synagogues. For the day is coming when those who persecute the body of Christ will do so thinking they're doing a service to God. And so true believers are going to get squeezed out of actual churches. They're going to get squeezed out of Bible study, Bible, uh, home cell Bible study groups. They're going to get kicked out of uh, corporates where they work. They're going to get persecuted severely. It's going to be like a doubling down. It's going to be like we're dealing with anti focus epiphanies or whatever it's going to be like we're dealing with herod except without herod making it clear that this is a war against christians it's just going to look like a war against those who are intolerant and christians are going to be like y'all know we agree with you except they're not christian they're lukewarm they're fallen they're flaccid they're super sardian having a reputation for being alive even though they're dead and when then your country is doing that the lord is going to just merely take his christians because you are all apostate and then do this to it it's called the tribulation i'm trying to help you understand why you got here guys why you're busy out here sitting outside of me you're looking like a prison blanket yeah because why about and you're listening to me on some like i don't know solar charged laptop in the bush or whatever because of the fact that you could not leisurely with a great deal of luxury just sit opposite your laptop in your cushy apartment and listen to me given that everybody is out here weeding you out do you understand weeding you out mm, like your rodents in a tunnel mm, granted that you have unleashed yourself to jesus christ i'm trying to help you understand why you're in that position and why you should not grumble grunt and give a whole bunch of grief to the god in heaven for putting you in that nasty position because you have put yourself in that nasty position by ostracizing karabo by marginalizing me making me live on the outliers of society by squeezing me into a little corner and saying live there or else well the lord took the body of christ because you were trash okay and once the lord took the body of christ you now don't get to continue to be trash otherwise you will be trashed in the eternal lake of fire so i'm trying to discourage you from bashing your fist against god claiming things were not broken but he tried to fix it mm. No, they were broken, you just did not make an observation of it because you were asleep. So this entity that is very sexually perverse, that I keep seeing in my dreams, represents a spirit that enters men when the devil wants to discombobulate societies. The devil 
the devil likes to do things upside down and stuff right uh, from god he is a counterfeiter so whatever the lord has erected um the right way up the devil will try and put it upside down yeah or whatever meaning that if god has said left the devil will say right when the lord has said up the devil will try down yeah etc etc you get my point mm. uh so the patriarchy and how things ought work the leadership structure according to god the devil has been trying to flip it on its head for a minute and he has finally succeeded in 2023 to get a whole bunch of countries in the world that used to be respectful of the patriarchy to flip upside down to make women embrace things like feminism to make women embrace things like they can be stronger than men and butch in a marriage and still be okay uh to make women believe things like uh, uh you they can protect and provide for a man and not the other way around and then also cause men to be namby pamby random uh wanting to vacuum houses instead of actually go and make some bread out there there is a trend video that is being done on on youtube tiktok wherever it is that you might find these social media trendy one minute videos that everybody is doing uh where it is that some dude says a small speech initially upon being asked so what would you do if your wife ended up uh, again if your wife earned i think the amount of money or something like a hundred thousand dollars a year or two hundred thousand dollars a year or three some big money i don't know how to convert though i don't know what the standard of living of living is in america in terms of dollar value i can't tell you what that means but it would be the equivalent let's say in south african terms of asking what would you do if your wife earned a million rand per annum yeah and then all these guys are doing little videos where it is that they show themselves dancing happily vacuuming vacuuming a house uh mopping the floor uh dusting you know um tables and what have you uh, dancing you know happily so basically saying that if my wife earned that much money i would be glad to be a stay-at-home husband all i can do when i look at this trend being proliferated is wag my head because that's just the thing it's a trend now it's a trend enough for it to be getting done by so many young men uh just for views basically saying that it's okay for women to earn more than men it's not i promise you it is not it is not because it results in danger in the end it results in death it results in morbid depression it results in a lack of satisfaction on the part of the woman and it also results in being cheated on with weak women by these men that they might feel like they're they, they're needed by these females but it is a trend that is being proliferated that is therefore being taken up that is therefore deceiving people into thinking that it's a whole feasible sustainable thing thanks to that this is what looks like very innocent trend that is being proliferated out there it looks innocent enough like i said women are dying and men are becoming violent it just does not work the devil has prospered to flip the coin he has made things upside down he has created a modern society where roles are reversed where women are just walking around as these butch things it's also highly unacceptable for a woman to be proposing marriage to a man the most that a woman can do is sit on the threshing floor of boaz but she does not get to propose marriage boaz is the one that makes a decision so all of these shows on netflix with women out here popping rings asking men to marry them it's unsustainable not only is it unsustainable you could get humiliated because men still want to be the ones to make that decision men are the ones that choose a wife they're the ones according to the scriptures that find a wife and so therefore find a good thing you will never hear the bible saying anything about a woman finding a husband right but rather men are the ones that out there scout and they search the periphery as ruth you can chill on the threshing floor out of e hint like no man's business to a guy that you're very severely interested in him proposing marriage to you but you don't get to be like uh tepo will you marry me because that's just going to make tepo be like but like why'd you have to take that away from me why'd you have to take that away from me whether or not men want to claim themselves to be mature and that they can take that in their stride ain't no man out here trying to get proposed marriage to buy a woman do you understand what i'm saying it just does not work that way women you cannot flip that narrative plus women inherently deep down low-key inside want to be proposed to is that basic you cannot flip male and female roles and still be okay so that's why you're chilling in the tribulation you propose marriage to your freaking husbands is that basic you're chilling in the tribulation because you paid the rent and not the men you're chilling in the tribulation because you insisted on being butch even though you're the only one that can have babies and now as a result of that men now also think they can have babies at least the ones chilling in the west that's what's happening like when you flip things upside down you will ultimately flip that which cannot even be biologically possible to flip upside down but you're gonna try you're gonna come up with surgery to come up with all that to make that a whole fe feasibility so that's why the lord ended this whole concern yeah had to all be burned down now that you've repented hallelujah amen but don't cry when you're sleeping uh on a brick for a pillow you 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 had that coming yeah 
speaking about this entity this filthy darkened entity that uh that harasses very sexually the provocation is in witchcraft it is in witchcraft it is in luring women into their lives using witchcraft like i told you guys this cult in south africa wanted to cajole women using succubus spirits that that would lure them to them sexually uh cause them to be severely attracted to men that they under normal circumstances would find unacceptable yeah and also embrace ideologies that like i said under normal circumstances they would find deplorable but they would now be happy to talk when you can be that ransacked by lower order entities what in the world are you going to do on the day you're dealing with principalities what what are you going to do mm. okay well the day is coming when principalities chilling at the river euphrates are just going to be let go and things in the bottomless pit are going to be let go and they're going to be stinging mankind for five months except you but you are going to be able to cite them which in and of itself could give you shock and ptsd okay right guys the world has been destroyed by you even if you imagined you were just this like peaceful guy that was swaying left to right really just helping everything along making everything more peaceful than it already was because you were that no no trouble oak whether or not you're the no trouble oak is irrelevant because look at the trouble you're in now mm. anyway yeah so this whole violence rape thing thank god i escaped it because i got born again but all i did was escape it i did not however get what i wanted why because i'm living in a trashy society that has absolutely ransacked itself against the will of god and the lord is now rapturing the body of christ we yes, tata mm. the lord is taking us on home because men are entitled to me why are they entitled because they succeeded with you women don't you see they got you and so since i'm the remnant on the outliers all marginalized i i just look like something that's easily fair game because they've been spoiled by you they've been spoiled by you you've taken a whole bunch of trash in your stride you've allowed yourself my life think to drive a man around town instead of you sleep in the passenger seat with a seat reclined no how and trust that it's not gonna crash and burn because he's the one here that needs to stay awake while driving all the way to cape town yeah look i'm not saying don't help your men along in driving but i'm trying to help you understand what there are just some rules that are fit for men that are not fit for women and when you try to flip them around there's just little joy and because of the fact that you're living in little joy where you're basically john and john is jane now that same john is expecting that i'm going to one day be his john while he gets converted into a jane while i would have nothing to do with it i don't want these pipsqueaks but they want me high and low why because they got you men are ambitious guys they're hunters that's what you must understand and so when a woman is out of reach and out of their league they will try and get her yours is to reject them and when you reject them they will make like nice old school men and move on to the next one but if you keep on allowing them to ultimately get to you because they tried hard enough goodness gracious you're in trouble it's that basic and all of y'all have allowed yourselves that you wanted nothing to do with men that you did not like and now you're with them and now you're out your groveling putting a man in a wheelbarrow pushing him around all over town instead of you being the one that is being trolleyed all over the show understand that the moment you are the one lifting a man on your wedding day into the sky while the photographer takes a photo while you're the one oku killing everything if you're gonna be carrying even the bill like, like half the bill 50 percent of your mar your wedding bill as a lingyal just go back to the 50s go back to the 60s 80s how many of your mothers paid for half of their weddings how many now women come on let's keep it real you are out here taking out two hundred thousand four hundred thousand for lingalo that's almost a million if at all lingalo lajajo is almost a million or if at all your your your, your wedding cost two hundred and fifty thousand goodness gracious then i guess you need to scale down and have one year one hundred thousand then seeing as you don't have the 150k to pull out you pride yourself in these elaborate top billing weddings because the wife put in 50% and the man put in 50%. 50-50, rabish. That's what you must understand. It's the very thing that's going to make Tarzan into Jane and Jane Tarzan. And when then those roles have been flipped, that's when Tarzan becomes a murder suicide. Do you understand? Otlobolaya Jane and the kids and then turn the gun on themselves. On himself. Men have not been wired to take in their stride being run by women. They get embittered and if they don't end up killing, they end up cheating on their wives with weak women. They cheat on their wives with namby pamby little girlies that they can take care of. Women that need them and they will fall heavily in love with them because that's exactly what makes a man love a woman and that's exactly what makes a woman love a man the thing that makes men men is what it is that makes women love them and the thing that makes women women is the thing that makes men love them and so when you start to be like a man 
dealing with a heterosexual man he will lose attraction for you over time and then gain it for a woman that is still very much like a woman the dainty coy little girly girl that is out here needing every ounce of help to so much as like tie her shoelaces everything she needs help for the girl is wobbly legged and she is a damsel in distress men will fly to that woman fast and furious and if then you parch a man of his state as a man him walking in it perpetually when you keep on insisting that munna hawa khasudi jana when you keep on insisting that munna hawa a etse londri a tshentse di diaper tsa ngwana and all that jazz and then you also every so often just change your own tires and you also every so often just service your own vehicle and you also every so often just basically do all these heavy duty male tasks if you're the one that's out here changing those light bulbs with those rolls changing over time some chick at the gymnasium that's out here freaking out pulling her hairs out wondering but why is my tire flat your man is going to fall in love with her fast and furious you are literally pushing your man to her purely because he was able to help her change out a tire so even though he would never have cheated on you it's going to actually deal it because this woman needs him more than you needs him more than you if ever so if some woman feels like you know starts freaking out cuz she broke her fingernail for crying out loud from carrying groceries out of her vehicle and your husband is right there in the periphery and then he's like ma'am do you need help and then he helps her along with those groceries while you insist on being incredible hulk and doing all that by yourself without asking your husband for help cuz you got this it does not have to be a man he is going to fall in love with your upstairs neighbor do you understand without you having seen it coming it was a hard the same girl that you also used to greet and smile is now out here humping your man is that basic like these things are not supposed to work out that way similarly to now way as a woman you too are going to miss him being a superman when you convert him into a little girl oh eat a piss's mama when you convert your man into a tiny little girl that's what's good you're going to miss his manly manhood such that such that when then some dude at the gymnasium helps you along to basically relieve yourself from the weight of like some machine that you i guess underestimated just how heavy it is you undercalculated and now you are just suffering when a man helps you along and he easily just lifts it get a lick at it or lay one you will thank him for that moment but then something in you is going to be sparked on some goodness yeah no society really needs men cuz they do at the end of the day even if i work out like a dog too have better upper body strength they're just physically <laughs> essentially stronger than us in a way that makes us attracted to them that's the reason why we like them we are attracted to men for their manly manness and men are attracted to women for their girly girlness or their woman womanliness and when you think that you can just flip that when that's the roles that that's the, the order that the lord set apart for us to basically walk in you are naive you're going to find a man attractive that runs to basically shield you with an umbrella when you're in the rain or some would say you're going to find it attractive you are going to find yourself falling in love with a man that gets it if your husband waho bona ogena and it's raining it's pouring cats and dogs do you understand and he just lets you come into the house dripping while some next door neighbor makes a decision to basically cover you got umbrella ya hai and walks with you to the beginning of your house and says okay are you going to be fine from here if anything you can take my umbrella you'll give it back to me when i see you next time in the complex you are going to walk into the house having used that man's umbrella and look at your husband who heard your car coming in sitting scrolling through television and be like what in the world is going on chivalry is really dead so you're putting in yourself yourselves in a position to basically end up having affairs against your husbands the ones that you are paying the way off the ones that you are basically being men to while they're women to you you're flipping roles and now you've destroyed the earth look at that chilling out in the tribulation looking all sad and stuff you're so sappy kenka di toko yeah you will know what it's like to have nsinsi just hang out over there without you feeling it like you know those very hungry impoverished children in the horn of africa who are always having flies walking around them and you're like but goodness why don't you just like move that thing off right now all of your sensory receptors are able to feel everything cuz you're healthy or stored you've got all of your nutrients in your body so much so that you have them in excess to a point of gaining 25 kilograms go fella drink covid 19 that's what's good that's you so i'm seeing see elenda more you like haitloha but there are people who are so hungry that their sensory receptors are eroded away at they fall down cuz the body is giving nutrients to everything else other except that so they can have flies crawling on them and not feel them and sometimes they even lay eggs in their eyes basa bo basa feel basa feel you can't even fathom how in the world and the heaven how somebody does not feel that some of y'all are so sensitive that you can feel a mosquito landing on you and like to, before it, it starts to gnaw away at you so we to see it because you felt it landing the way you're so nourished now you're going to have a fly walking on you and outray ultra a person will be like there's something on you move it 
because you are that malnourished. As spoiled as you are currently, you can afford to flip rules. But in the tribulation, you are going to need the upper body strength of men to do what it is that it does. You are going to struggle to do things that women generally struggle to do. You cannot be a woman as a man and vice versa. It's that basic. It is literally that basic. And such things as these will all of a sudden be clear to you. They will all of a sudden be overt to you. But you will have deliberately tried to smother them, stymie them, suppress them for what? They're the reality. They're the reality. You have called good evil and evil good. You have flipped bitter for sweet you've made the world upside down some funny little cantankerous chaos it's weird it's the underworld i can see what you mona but it's not the earth that i grew up on i'm sorry i don't recognize it it was already on decline when i got born and then by the time i got born again it declined even faster because i guess we're at the end of the end are we not and now look at you having a fly laying an egg in your eye mm. you had it coming when that does happen you don't get to blaspheme god and continue with your sorceries and your etc do you understand? That are out just sleeping around with one kumuntu. And that you are also allowing to entangle themselves with you when they are too much too tiny, too minuscule for you, have caused me to have a whole bunch of such worms encircle my life. Worms that are absolutely not in my league. Tried to come in. Back in the day, the kind of man from the US, the kind of man that he is, he would never have dared even try and pursue me because men were achievers do you understand they knew that if they could not take care of a woman Basca Foster they they tended to stay within their leagues they tended to not want to be emas like a man literally going out of his way to make sure that he doesn't get emasculated by pursuing a woman that is way too heavy for him way too heavy for him now men are the ones that are gold diggers yeah when men don't pursue women based on what is achievable but they pursue them based on what it is that they, that can be done for them ultimately in the long run when they start to use women as pawns in order to get what it is that they want in life when they have not deserved it the world is just flipped into something other than what it used to be and with that being an unfortunate and unfortunate thing the world then also had to end isn't it guys the lord had to basically end this concern and say i'm sorry no we're not doing it we are not doing it you have gotten me pursued by a man that does not make sense for me why because it's 2023 and men that don't make sense for women are out here easily just you know they are changing them one after the other after the other after the other men are having fun they're dunking themselves inside women that are so out of their league so out of their league that it becomes like a whole yay conquering feat when they go back to their boys and tabulate those statistics men are hunters so because they're hunters yours like prey in the wild you gotta just run hide do what you need to do so you don't get caught do not make yourself bait for some dude that doesn't make sense you need to know what makes sense and what doesn't you cannot be so thirsty and hungry for love that you will take a man in your stride that might kill you and your children one day because you became so much bigger than him one day you became so girthy in comparison to him that he now just could not take the prospect of you being with somebody else and so he killed you and then turned the gun on himself leaving your children orphaned worse yet killed your children too that's what happens ultimately and i've been trying to avoid that but some dude feels entitled to me because all of y'all have abandoned me because all of y'all are married to pipsqueaks you're married to tiny little men and you have given undeserving harlot women to men that were supposed to be your husbands like men that would have been able to carry the weight of the girth of the woman that you are i'm married to some fluffy jezebels it's like the whole world is upside down they're married to women that don't deserve men that are responsible men that are above reproach men that are working hard women who just squander a man's inheritance instead of help him continue to build it the world is just upside down the right men are married to the wrong women and the right women are married to the wrong men and so they're not with each other what then eventually happens exactly what happened with my family members isn't it my female family members they get divorced from these pipsqueaks and then voila boom, 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 boom. she's a mistress to a man that is far better to her than her husband ever was and so she just goes on being a lifetime mistress the man of which is married to a woman that he imagines is not enough for him hence why he's got like a mistress that's lingering for like five years seven years ten years like a mistress that goes and creates a whole family double life with a man mm. because i think Alejandra from the very get-go you are just throwing yourselves into these random relationships and then you just settle for a proposal a man also who deserving and now you're all mad at Karabo for real well look at me now be in heaven and you chilling out see in the tribulation you had it coming you had it coming you had it coming don't get upset at god when he's like lambasting you with plagues because you destroyed the earth you disregarded his order 
if you had just listened to the fundamental rules of what God would have you be, you wouldn't be in this mess. But you're in it now, aren't you? So kya ka tswela pele ka tsale ya ga go editsila ena ngli di mice and the mites lady lice. That's knowing where your body but it's the only one we could make zeng ka yona. Carry on with that little ugly blanket because you deserve to have lost me kya ga go ya 2023 because no tell like a 2023 age. Eh. That's what's good. You had it coming, right? Mm. Liti kenze Cruella Deville and so now deal got Deville walona. Satan wa lona tlabale likisa morago like you are Tom and Jerry. Yeah. Trying to force you to take the mark of the beast. You had that coming, guys. You have to understand what you did to the planet. This whole thing of me being pursued by Dweba Ena. This so boy Enya Nyana. This tiny little whatever and the heaven it is that we're looking at over there in America. Omunyane that guy he is minuscule in the worst way. He does not suit me in the worst way. He is not on my league in the worst way. And yet he feels entitled to me because the world is upside down. Back in the day, he would have understood what is in his league, what makes sense for him, and that would have been what he pursued. And so he wouldn't have felt so emasculated by me. Yet he is very ambitious to acquire me anyway. Mm. That's what's happening in 2023. Give a try, give a na basang chaneling because all of y'all liti pilebo na batwa yezi ukora batwa yezi kupapa kalona. They are used to ukupapa ngani. And so manje in dota my popila after gambling with witchcraft. He pop a get diamond. Well of course he's going to feel entitled to another diamond, won't he? It's like inevitable. You've also put me in so much poverty that whoever it is that would have been a more responsible sober man for me. I was no gumbo na gashe because everybody has reviled my name so badly. So manje when I can't live because apparently I've got a pie in the sky ideal of what a man ought be and a marriage ought look like. Yeah, now you you're throwing me out of society. You're kicking my barik, meaning that you're making sure that I'm dying. You're leaving me to be basically murdered by a man that's like you either are with me or you die. And so if at all you feel I should die, this is what God is going to do. He's just going to take the body of Christ before you kill them. And then let you experience the world you created, the world that was made in your image. Here it is. Take it. It's a tale, guys. You asked for it, Danish. Yeah. Mm. My family members, the females, they first marry pipsqueak men. They divorce them while they're still very beautiful. However, these pipsqueak men have lost so much in these women that they hook them garikari. They mess up their lives with witchcraft, and so blocking marriages or anybody else from ever proposing to them or loving them properly then causes. The end result of women in my family ending up mistresses after having been married before. And like I said, they become the mistresses of very responsible men. And responsible is a word that I throw around loosely over there because if you're cheating, you're not responsible. But they certainly are more manly than what their husbands were. And that's why they justify being with a married man. To them is the lesser evil. The devil knows how to make you take a compromise. First he puts you in a rough situation, ewag, ezwa. And then he puts you in a, a more still tranquil ecosystem even though it's not ideal. So he puts you in a horrible marriage and then puts you in a tranquil affair with a married man even though it's not ideal. You would much rather he not be married. So that's how women settle for being mistresses for 5, 6, 7, 10 years, 20 years giving a man three whole children, double life all together because where am I ever going to find a man like this? You end up singing that horrendous song, Yeah Whitney Houston, saving all my love for you as a woman. You will literally sing saving all my love over and over and over again because you imagine it just don't get better than this man the devil knows how to deceive. He will first marry you off to um, a small little Ken doll and then a big manly man making like King Kong on a mountain top bashing his chest will rock up and offer you the world but he's married. And so now you're a lifestyle mistress. That's what's good. But hey, he's taking care of you in a way that no man ever has. If anything, he's given you more time and attention than your husband who was living with you ever could. Whoa. They're able to live double lives these guys aren't they? Yeah. That's the life that you're living and you're not even ashamed of it because it's your necessary evil. Well, I mean guys, like literally hell is real. It's there to pay and you don't get to be a lifestyle mistress and not go there. However, you're in the tribulation listening to my videos now so you're born again meaning that you've dumped your baby daddy married man and now you see that you've destroyed the world by being irresponsible. Mm. Is that basic? That's what's good. And now the same thing is in pursuit of me. It is in pursuit of me and I'm like I'm sorry but like what I ever deserve? What I ever do to deserve this? Why am I being so richly pursued by this except I woke up one day and I really last gong, right? I discovered you guys that this thing is pursuing me because it has successfully pursued so many other women and so now it feels entitled to me. That's what happens when you train people to basically get everything that they've always wanted even if they've not worked for it. Mm. 
when you train people to always win even when they've lost next time when something tells them i'm sorry the rules are set they're black and white they're cast in stone they're unshifting and they say that you've lost they'll be like mm. they'll literally look at you on some lost i don't know what that means i do not understand it please explain it to me nah i still don't agree with your uh, dictionary definition of that because i'm not used to losing so i'm gonna get this Essentially, you create entitled men. When you keep on capitulating to the Gorobela Zena all over the show, ultimately, when a man meets an actual Christian woman that's like, ew, no, get out, he's like, uh, uh no, this is confusing. Nothing like this has ever happened to me before, so I'm just gonna go and dig around in my ecosystem here and see what else I can try, because this is an anomaly. It's strange, it's not supposed to be doing this. Okay, just wait one minute, Garaba, I'll be back, okay? I'm gonna make you agree. Really? You're gonna make me agree. I said no. You. I, I need to wait just five minutes. I'm gonna run now. <laughs> yeah. No, Garabo, you can't even run because I'm just gonna tether you back into my space. Really? But I said no. Yeah, and it all just doesn't count that I said no. It doesn't count. Yeah, women, you've made men entitled. And the thing that has made you make them entitled to us yeah is the fact that you're not really saved you're not born again you don't know jesus and so you were never protected from just being reeled in Gagorovela. you were never protected from ending up a mistress you were never protected from ending up settling for marrying oedipus and so suffering from an oedipus complex man severely afflicted by castration anxiety and yet you're out here nonetheless marrying him anyway because you've got penis envy that's you yeah and so you're running with all the psychological like deconstruction in your brain you're twitching like 24 hours a day and then you allow some pipsqueak guy to marry you when you're a whole general manager earning this chunky salary and he is just scraping his way past business analysis really but like you've been together since high school well you should have known when to dump him i told you stop dating in high school like you need to know when to leave because that same business analyst out you're dealing with his like gm wife is gonna kill her and the children one day just out of feeling emasculated by such a strong wife i'm a daughter don't do well when their women are doing better than them i can't say that enough but i know get high school sweetheart high school first and foremost i have a cousin on yetzing high school sweetheart that turned out to be like nothing later on but she still went on and gave him a baby i don't know if they married or what high school sweetheart high school sweet high school now some random animal has met me in the ten amount of what would be high school like in my lowly days i'm lowly just like him right now so he tuned fella was struggling in life or trying to make ends meet well i'm not even trying to make ends meet i'm struggling to right yeah and he imagines that i mean we've been together since the dark days he feels entitled to me even though my earning potential far excels above his day is gonna arrive when i'm making a whole bunch and i've got this little pipsqueak that was already displayed as very very violent and now there's like a live round in my skull look at that now there's like a live round in babies i desperately wanted look at that i'm as good as a barren woman now because three of my babies are in the ground because my husband killed them why would I want to push myself to that? But you see, that monster feels entitled to me. Because he's been bewitching a whole bunch of women out in the left and on the right of him. And they've all just landed on his lap. Wow, look at that. And all of these women call themselves Christians. So he just looks at another professing Christian woman. And he's like, it's only a matter of time. I'm finally going to get her. Really? Yeah, that's the thing. When you don't know the difference between a real Christian and one that's not, you will keep on trying with the real deal. Until, I don't know, the Lord raptures the church. You will keep on trying and trying and trying, afflicting one about to asaho badly. She finds you disgusting. She wants nothing to do with you. But you will keep trying. Why? Because every woman that you have ever reeled in with witchcraft has always been a little church girl. She's always been all up in the pews. She's always been attending Bible studies on Wednesdays. She's always been drasha ta 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 gadi tongues. She's always been that girl. And yet you were able to successfully corovela her. Hmm. Yeah, so Garabo, it's just a matter of time before that little religious nut, yeah, finally caves in because all the rest of them did. Yeah, no, it's called the great apostasy, okay? It's called the great falling away. Men will not endorse sound doctrine. It's called they will exchange the truth of God for a lie, so the law sends them a strong delusion. 
They give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. It's called Laodicea, lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. And so because of that, God is going to spit them out of his mouth. It's called you have a reputation for being alive even though you're dead. You live where Satan has his throne. You are Pergamum. You, you just take in your stride, that woman Jezebel, your Thyatira. It's called you're lost even though you think you're found. It's called the five foolish virgins. And the Lord is about to set that record straight. What are the one that you kept on bewitching and she just could not come around. She was not quite shaking into shape. Yeah, that's the one that was that had oil in her lamp. And I took her so you could see. Uremaina, Lilerato, Lipinki, Lirenewe, Lineo. All of them that you managed to get with Corobella. Look around. Yeah, exactly. There they are. Where's Carabo? Gone. Where's Carabo? Raptured. But Maina, Pinki, Lerato, Neo, Renewe. All of them still hanging out in your camp, Crenshaw. Go for the tonnello. Oh, Bahu, the tonnette macho. You're staring into each other's eyes, wondering, Casimina, and Shieluin. You are still shocked, and Shieluin. And Shieluin. Yeah, she was never saved, yo. That's why you were able to reel her in, Garikari. She was never saved, yo. That's why you managed to sleep with her out of wedlock. That's why she was willing to put down her chastity belt, her promise to God to not have sex before marriage. She was never saved. Demas left us because he was never of us, but you couldn't tell the difference between my Lerato Renewe and Carabo. They all look like Pingi, so I mean, really, you're just gonna keep on trying and trying and trying, and then you will afflict Carabo so much. You will afflict Carabo so much that God was like, if at all I don't cut the days of Carabo's sorrow short, she will not live. I told you before the Lord will let me finally get get killed by persecution using witchcraft, by men, by Korobela, by death spells if you don't be with me, Carabo, before the Lord will let me dive into a casket. Because I am tired of fighting spiritual wars with these witches, with these vagrants, with these, what, these, these worms, these stealthy, pernicious, destructive men with the women that help them along in this cause. He will rapture the body of Christ. This morning when I woke up, I was just so flattened and exasperated to have recalled yet more nightmares of this wickedness because for me, it's like, for how long? God, I mean, really, come on. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. My heart is sick now. Why? Why do they keep thinking that there is a shot? And I guess the answer to that question, even though the Lord didn't really answer me, it's, it's easy for me to reach a conclusion just using the word of God. They have exchanged the truth of God for a lie. And they've given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. They have been handed a strong delusion. And because of the great falling away, the great deception, the great apostasy, so many have fallen at the hands of this darkness that they think you're just a little bit of a rough case. And so they keep trying with you over and over and over again, only because they've made an observation of what they call Christian settling, called Christian conquering, that they have made an observation of what they call, ultimately, we get them. Except the scriptures make it clear that Demas leaves us because he was never of us. So you don't see that Lerato is not born again. All you see is Lerato and Carabo both speak the same Christian knees. So I can knock them out. It's just that Carabo has got a stronger willpower. Mm. Now apparently I've got stronger willpower. So they just need to like hold faster and just fell out to the matter. They just need to like keep trying over and over again. Burn a sacrifice. They just keep freaking trying over and over and over again. And in their attempts, wear me out. I don't get a break. No respite, nothing guys. I get totally pomolo from witchcraft, do you understand? And the reason I don't get rest is because these men have succeeded with so many other women. They have succeeded with so many other women that they think it's just a matter of time before I'm finally one of theirs. It doesn't matter that I find them disgusting because all the women that they salivated after at some point found them disgusting too. Like you know when a man and then you end up sleeping with him anyway? Because like a korobel. Yeah. They've prospered to bring women into their beds that used to look at them on some jabu. Ew, gross. And now jabu's your boyfriend. The fact that I find them gross is of no consequence because they've converted even that before. Let's move to the next part.